Hi Trinity, this is Jennifer serving for evening prayer on Thursday, January 28th. And the saint that we're honoring today is Thomas Aquinas. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 118, beginning with verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. I called to the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered by setting me free. The Lord is at my side, therefore I will not fear. What can anyone do to me? The Lord is at my side to help me. I will triumph over those who hate me. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in flesh. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in rulers. All the ungodly encompass me. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They hem me in. They hem me in on every side. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They swarm about me like bees. They blaze like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our lesson today is a continuation from yesterday, from Mark chapter 6, and we're beginning with verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. <clears throat> For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, 
because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all and all ate and were filled. They took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethesda, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. Here ends the reading. The Song of Mary My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now a reading about Thomas Aquinas. He was a priest, a friar, and theologian, And he died the 28th of January in the year 1274. In the 13th century, when Thomas Aquinas lived, the works of Aristotle, largely forgotten in Western Europe, began to be available again, partly from Eastern European sources and partly from Muslim Arab sources in Africa and Spain. These works offered a new and exciting way of looking at the world. Many enthusiastic students of Aristotle adopted him, quite frankly, as an alternative to Christianity. The response of many Christians was to denounce Aristotle as an enemy of the Christian faith. A third approach was that of those who tried to hold both Christian and Aristotelian views side by side, with no attempt to reconcile the two. Aquinas had a fourth approach. While remaining a Christian, he immersed himself in the ideas of Aristotle and then undertook to explain Christian ideas and beliefs in language that would make sense to the disciples of Aristotle. At the time, this seemed like a very dangerous and radical idea, and Aquinas spent much of his life living on the edge of ecclesiastical approval. His success can be measured by the prevalence today of the notion that, of course, all Christian scholars in the Middle Ages were followers of Aristotle. Aristotle was no longer the latest intellectual fashion, but Aquinas' insistence that the Christian scholar must be prepared to meet other scholars on their own ground, to become familiar with their viewpoints, to argue from their premises, has been a permanent and valuable contribution to Christian thought. Some Christian scholars today are undertaking, with varying degrees of success, to explore the relations between Christianity and various contemporary studies or world outlooks that have been used as weapons by opponents of Christianity. Examples that come to mind include the following. William G. Pollard, Anglican priest, nuclear physicist at the Oak Ridge Laboratory, executive director of the Oak Ridge Institute for Nuclear Studies, and author of Chance and Providence, and Physicist and Christian. John Polkinghorne, FRS, Anglican priest, head of Queen's College, Cambridge, 
nuclear physicist and author of Science and Creation, Science and Providence, and various other works, including most recently, The Faith of a Physicist. G.B. Sanders, author of Christianity After Freud, various writers on liberation theology who have undertaken to show that Marxism, properly interpreted, does not impal, imply the falsity of Christianity. And now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit and the communion of Thomas Aquinas and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have enriched your church with the singular learning and holiness of your servant Thomas Aquinas. Enlighten us more and more, we pray, by the disciplined thinking and teaching of Christian scholars, and deepen our devotion by the example of saintly lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.